The main story coming into the Kyella Grand Prix is that it is a double points event, meaning that every position will award twice as many points as it normally would. This could potentially shake up the points situation. Another big story is the recurring incidents between Tony Durbin and Alexis Rainsford in practice, and also with Alexis Rainsford and Brian Sendak, with Rainsford claiming that the SAR drivers are out to get her, and uh, seeing as she's gone, already gone through her primary and her backup car, and will be starting a race in Zach Duff's backup car, we'll have to see how this race turns out. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance, and here we are for the 33rd running of the Coriolis Grand Prix. On the bottom is the starting grid. Brian Sendak and Vladimir Simonov on the front row. Nasova and Arto Kekinen are both former winners of the race. Row 3, Mika Turbo and Matthias Taub. Turbo, a rookie. Taub making a second start. Roderick and Rainsford have both been quick during practice. Hodges and Watts have had some respectable showings here this week. Christian Kalela, 1987, Formula A World Champion, and Lewis Kingston. Esco Kiskela and Chris Johans have not found success here in the woods. Franz Redlich and Adrian Devereaux have both been known for incidents here in the woods. Talonen and Kivela are both making their first starts. Kivela failed to qualify last year. Matt Taylor and Drew Eisenman in row number 10. Tom Delgado and Dale Roswell have been known for pulling out some very impressive showings from questionable cars. Stephanie McGlynn and Danny Sabin, a two-time winner of the race. Axel Anderson and Kevin Dwyer, yes, the son of six-time Master Cup champion Benny, is in the is in the race. Ethan Everett and Yamino Tenchi are both making their first starts. Tony Durbin and Ross Peterson have shown some speed, but Durbin not so much in qualifying. He's in a backup car. David Krikorian and Leon Kennison have yet to find success here. Scott Bates has never qualified well here, but always seems to race well. And Vladimir Simonov making his first start, as are Ali Riggs and Azuma Kazuyama. Zelda Ashby and Scott Stoidler did not qualify nearly as well as they would have liked. Kurt Pliskin and Jacques Bouvier starting towards the back of the field and on the final row of the grid. Marcus Leonard and Stuart Sandoval in the only Corsa in the field. Of course, Corsa's had a dismal season, and uh, they are not having a very good time here in the Cariala either. The other two where their cars failed to qualify. As we look at the grid, as they come down towards the newly named Kalela hairpin, of course, Christian Kalela, for whom that uh, turn is named right here, is in the race today. Brian Sendak, and we've got a car... Looks like we have a car slowing. That is Danny Savin, the 2003 and 2004 winner of this race. One of only a few drivers to win this race more than once. Of course, Benny Dwyer won it four times. Leonid Roderick has won it twice. Of course, no driver has won this race more than four times. In fact, Benny Dwyer is the only driver to have won it three times. Danny Savin is going to pull car 91 into the pits. He's going to get back onto the track, though. And here we come as Brian Sendak and Vladimir Simonov lead the field to take the green flag in the 33rd running of the Coriola Grand Prix is on. Sendak and Simonov, and we see many cars jostling for positions down through the field. Rainsford, I think, is out of line. That's uh, Kaskela going wide. Looks like Simonov's going to have the advantage coming into turn three, and we're expecting a lot of chaos. We haven't had it yet. Pretty clean so far, but towards... The back a little bit, we do have our first lap chaos, which is sort of a kind of an annual tradition. McGlynn gets on the grass, gets into Anderson, and Kazuyama, Dale Roswell goes spinning. Several other cars involved. Kurt Pliskin doesn't look like he got any damage, but he slowed down. Looks like uh, the two Majestic Motorsports cars are both involved. Uh, that is uh, Nikolaev in the back, and that white car, and Tony Durbin is in the sand. So Tony Durbin, the championship leader, this is not what he wanted. Problems on t on the first lap of the race, and here we and here coming in to turn three it looks like just sort of not enough room for everyone to fit, and it just all went to madness. You see, Tony Durbin got turned by Delgado. Looks like Roswell and Taylor just got pinched together. Probably the only re uh, excuse you have for wrecking your teammate right, is if you didn't have any room. McGlynn got on the grass, spun out. Here's what happened to Durbin. Oh, that was Kevin Dwyer that I was looking at. I thought that was Durbin's car. Looks like Dwyer got hooked by Delgado. So Tony Durbin got turned into the sand by Nikolaev. On board with Tony Durbin. See, everything just sort of goes to madness right in front of him. 
Durbin gets hooked, and into the sand he goes. He was not too happy about this over his radio, as you can probably expect. And uh, Durbin saying that some people just need to use their heads and get through the first lap. Can't say I disagree. Here we are watching Kevin Dwyer in car number 72, second generation driver. Looks like he got pinched over a little bit by the 47. He gets taken into Tom Delgado. He hits that wall a little harder than you think with the left front of that, um, the left front suspension. And Dwyer actually goes out of the race on the first lap. I know the car looks okay, but there is a lot of internal damage to that 72 car. So Kevin Dwyer, unfortunately, out of the race early on. His father, Benny, of course, won all his races for finished teams. Here is David Krikorian making an unusual mistake into the pit wall, flying up into Zelda Ashby on the end of the first lap. David Krikorian takes out another one of the Power Steering Incorporated cars, that being the 16 of Kurt Pliskin. Pliskin tries to avoid Ashby, realizes he doesn't have enough room, tries to go the other way a bit too late, and Pliskin is out. There's Ashby watching Krikorian just hammers the pit wall. Looks like he was just committed to enter the pit lane a little too late. Looked like he was trying to maybe hot pit and gain a few uh, positions. Danny Savin's race isn't going to go well. He runs into Ashby as well. So for a former winner of the Coriola GP, it's over early. Brian Sendak and Vladimir Simonov, they were taking another look at the, at the start in the first lap. There you see Nasova in the blue car battling up on the inside of her teammate. Of course, Simonov and Nasova both uh, have been leading a lot of laps here in Karyala in their few starts. Simonov actually led a good deal of the race last year. That's uh, when Ivan Katzen uh, first made his commitment to run back in the TM Master Cup Series. Of course, Katzen has usually been a fixture here over years past, but he's finally gone full-time with his own car. And people thought that the KE-01 would be good for Karyala and nowhere else, and that's and that's showing to be the case, because the Cats of Cars have been lacking in power everywhere else. Simonov in second, Nasova in third. They're still going out for position. Simonov slides a little bit. Oh, that could have been a big collision in between their in between teammates on lap one. You know, we're still replaying the first lap here uh, back at the front of the field. See Arto Kakinen in third, Alexis Rainsford in the red 27 car in uh, fifth position, Rainsford has always been in contention to win the race in her five starts here so far, and it looks like that's going to be the case again. Alexis Rainsford will be a contender. Here's Alan Hodges early in the race on lap two. He's uh, not going to endear himself to the local crowd by turning Esco Casquella in the FinTech car off the track and out of the race. Uh, Alan Hodges sat on the pole here a couple years ago, but since then hasn't really had much success here. Now here comes Alan Hodges. Looks like Kalela pinches the three car of Kaskela out a little wide, and Alan Hodges gets into the three car, takes them both off the road. Not any fault of Hodges, but then again, the crowd normally doesn't really like it when uh, one of their own gets turned off the road. This is a replay of the first lap. Scott Stoiler runs into the back of Stuart Sandoval in the pits. That's not going to... Um, Make Flavio Vespucci, the team motor, very happy. This is Allie Riggs in the 219 car. She failed to qualify last year driving for the Flair Motorsports team. Ever since then, she hasn't really had much success in the series. And uh, she went to a part-time schedule in it for an independence trophy entry. And she made the race. The Arlo regular impressing so far. Normally known for crashing into people. This is lap four. The battle for fourth between Arto Kekkonen and Alexis Rainsford. Something's going to go wrong with Arto's car. And he's going to suddenly slow down. Alexis is getting hounded from behind. She's got only one option. Spin Arto Kekkonen, the fan favorite, off the road. Not exactly what the crowd wanted to see, obviously. But um, he re uh, but she was getting hounded from behind by, uh, I believe that's uh, Taub in the 38 car. You're going to see watching from Arto's uh, view. Yeah, something definitely went wrong with the 14, and it just created a huge traffic jam, and Alexis really didn't have many other options there. And uh, Arto was quick to come over his radio and say that was not her fault, uh, much to his credit. Uh, looked like there was a problem, and Arto just didn't get his car out of the way. As the rest of the field comes on by, Arto's going to make it into the pits, but he's going to rejoin the race. However, what that does do is that creates a pretty epic battle here for fourth place. That's Roderick in the orange car, Alexis Rainsford, and then we got Matthias Taub in car number 38, going to go three wide into turn one. Woody Watts in the green and gold car, and Lewis Kingston. This is all a battle for position here, as Taub looks like he's going to have advantage. Rainsford over to the left to throw the block on Roderick. Taub looks like he's got it. 
This is all for Ford. Rainsford going to try to put the power in on the left side. The next turn's a left hander. She's going to have advantage. Taub doesn't have enough room, and Rainsford's going to sweep in. Great race craft on the part of Alexis Rainsford to take over fourth. And Taub making a very aggressive stance early on in this race. Woody Watts completes the pass around Kingston. Roderick is still in contention as well in car number four. He's had a dismal season so far. As we see Rainsford pulling away, we've got a battle now between Roderick and Taub for fifth. Great stuff early on. You can see the rest of the field very close together as the two leading captives of Nasova and Simonov and the lead Tsar of Brian Sendak begin to streak away from the rest of the field. Pretty good showing so far from everybody as Taub is able to finally clear Roderick as they head into the Dwyer S. Matthias Taub sat on the pole here last year, but didn't really do as well as he would have liked. Taub hopes to win today. Franz Redlich in car 2, the second Volpe in the field, and Ethan Everett in car 11, playing a little bumper tag here. Over the weekend, it's, it's been a bit of a war between Volpe and Saar on the racetrack. Franz Redlich's not going to do that any favors by self-spinning off the track, spinning back onto the track, collecting Nils Talonen in the 1, and Ali Riggs in the 219. Talonen is a local driver. This is his first Master Cup Series start. He's currently leading the TM Europe point standings. Another look from Ali Riggs in car 219. And it looks like Leon Kennison almost lost it in the 39. Ali Riggs had nowhere to go in that 219 car. And it's a shame because Ali had finally begun to show something that we haven't seen much of. The ability to keep her car on the racetrack. However, this time she's involved in an incident not of her own doing. Lap 6, Vladimir Simonov in car 232, a solid third place behind his teammate Nasova and Brian Sendak is going to encounter problems with the Katsev. The unreliability of the Katsev strikes him and Vladimir Simonov is going to go out of the race very early on after being one of the pre-race favorites to take the win. Oh, how gut-wrenching does this have to be for a driver who is not only fighting to keep his spot in the series but inside the Katsev team? So Vladimir Simonov is going to go out early on, and what a huge disappointment for him. See all the, the rest of the field going by. Lap 7, Nasova has caught up to the back of Brian Sendak in the 8 car, but in a similar vein to Simonov, Nasova is going to run into problems as she slows down. However, unlike Simonov, Nasova is going to keep going and going to make a very lengthy pit stop. Mechanical problems bite the two leading Katsos early in the race, making this look like Brian Sendak's race to lose. However, he does have a hard-charging Lexus Rainsford and Matthias Taub to deal with, so we're going to have to see how that unfolds. But gut-wrenching for Yulia Nasova, who won this race in 2007. The first woman to win the race. However, a lot of people say that Alexis Rainsford was wrongfully robbed of the 2006 running of this event. Of course, that is a subject of much debate. Carella GP always creates a lot of controversy. There's Mika Turvo on the 77 going by, but Nasova drops through the field. Lewis Kingston, here we are still on lap 7. That's Yuho Kavela in the 111 right behind him. Kingston's going to lose the back end of the 41, slides to the grass. It gets hit by Kavela and goes off into the wall. Another early race incident for Lewis Kingston is not what he needed. He is way down in the point standings right now. After 10 laps of 57, Brian Sendak in the 8 is leading. Alexis Rainsford in the 27 is 2nd. In 3rd is Matthias Taub in the 38, and then Leonid Roderick in the 4. Then it is Woody Watts, Adrian Devereaux, Drew Eisenman, Christian Kalela, Mika Turvo, Yamino Tenchi, Ross Peterson in the Fortner. Great job by Peterson. Then it is Leon Kennison, Bouvier, Everett, Marcus Leonard, and Scott Bates in 16th place. Great run by Bates and Leonard. Everyone's 17th on down, pitted after lap one, and this is the car in 17th place. It is former Arla champion Chris Johans. Johans has not had a very good uh, career so far up until this season, where he finally begun to show the speed that his Arla resume promised. And Johans has been having a great season so far, picked up his first career win, claimed that his number 24 team meant business, and he's, and he's certainly showing that that is 100% true, Johans. A very strong 17th here at a track that he's not had much luck at in the past. Johans pitted after lap 1. He wasn't involved in any incidents, but it was part of his strategy in the race. Matt Taylor in car number 12 pits from 19th on lap 13. So this was not a scheduled stop. Taylor took a, uh, took a very long time in the pit lane. 
Brian Sendak was caught by Alexis Rainsford on lap 18, and on lap 20, Brian Sendak brings, brings car number 8 into the pits, along with the rest of the field. So Sendak in the 8, and Alexis Rainsford in the 27 both head into the pits. And following them, of course, Matthias Taub in the 38, and Leonid Roderick in the 4. Roderick, this is one of his best runs so far this season. However, throughout most of his good runs, he has had mechanical problems that have put him out of the race. Here comes the field leaving the pit. Sendak is out. Rainsford got a little faster stop, and Rainsford is going to have a great run coming out of the pits in that 27 car. There is the 38 of Taub and Roderick, who had a very slow stop. A little odd for that 4 crew to not have a very good pit stop. And they see Watt, Stevro, and Peterson all nose to tail. Very good job, especially by that part-time team that Ross Peterson has. Here's Leon Kennis in the short tracker and Jacques Bouvier in the 59. Now here's what I was talking about with Rainsford leaving the pits a little better than Sendak. She has a good run coming behind the 8 car. She's going to make a move on the inside of turn 1. This is for the lead of the race. Sendak throws a block. These two have had a history this week. Rainsford's not too happy about that. She gets into Sendak. Sendak spins into turn 3. Brian Sendak hits the wall. And Sendak is stuck in the sand trap. Brian Sendak looks like he just got dumped off the road by Alexis Rainsford. I saw a little revenge in that. Sendak tore up one of Rainsford's cars in practice, and the officials, you can see, are clearly not happy about that. So you can see already Alexis Rainsford and Brian Sendak have gotten together in the race. Alexis Rainsford took out Tony Durbin's primary car in practice after Durbin took out hers. So the apparent battle between Volpe and Saar is only going to intensify after this one. Team Saar USA has never won this race, and it doesn't look like they're going to do so today. Because now Sendak, their lead driver for this event, is gone. He is way off the leader's pace. He's got damage to the rear end, and he's going to have to pit to repair it. Because there is no way the officials are going to allow a damaged car such as Sendak to stay on the track. And here it is again. Sendak looks like he threw a block and it stole most of Rainsford's momentum. Lexus was not terribly happy about that. That was a little late to be throwing a block. I, I think that's what she felt. And then Sendak, off the road she went. Or off the road he went, excuse me. Um, that was a little messy. And you see the officials handed a 90-second stop-and-go penalty to Alexis Rainsford in the 27 car. That's almost one full lap. One lap around here in race trim is about 1 minute and 45 seconds, so that would effectively take Rainsford out of the running as well. However, here it is again. Rainsford gets into Sendak. Doesn't look like there was much of an attempt to make a pass there, and Rainsford just turned into Sendak, and Sendak went off the track. Even though it looked like Sendak was doing what he was doing, what he had to do to defend his spot, it looked like Rainsford just was not going to give him any space at all. The officials were not too happy about that, especially since these two had been told to stay away from each other. Here it is again. Alexis Rainsford catching Brian, Brian Sendak. Maybe some questions whether or not she was speeding, leaving the pits. Uh, it's a little questionable whether or not Sendak threw the block a little late or not. And Rainsford, from this angle, she just went right up and got into him. So, let's see what the officials... Uh, Officials aren't going to be too happy about it, especially since Alexis Rainsford did not acknowledge the black flag she was given after a couple of laps, and that is a major no-no in the Master Cup Series rulebook, and they do have something uh, for that. She decided not to come in for the black flag, so they took away three laps from her running total. And not only that, they called Rainsford and her crew chief to the hauler after the conclusion of the race. This puts Matthias Taub in the 38 car lead in the lead of the race. So already, twists and turns in the Cariola Grand Prix, and uh, Cyril Volpe, car owner of Alexis Rainsford's machine, was already lodging a protest to the uh, officials for this. Hmm. I don't think we've heard the last of this one, because Rainsford clearly did not acknowledge a black flag, and she just kept on going. This puts Taub in the lead, and Roderick in second. Could Leonid Roderick be the first, to, could be the, the uh, second, rather, three-time winner of this race? Benny Dwyer is the other. Taub is now leading in front of his home crowd, closest he's ever going to get to a home race. Taub is from Sweden. This track, of course, is in uh, eastern Finland. 
Here is Roderick in car number four. Of course, he could be the three-time winner of this race if his car doesn't fail on him. He's had a uh, rather nasty string of mechanical breakdowns in the Inglesby Flashback M-Type. In fact, all of the Inglesby cars have had mechanical failures of some sort. In fact, Arto, we believe it was a wheel nut problem on his car on car number 14. Drew Eisenman would have been in third place after this round of pit stops, but he over-revved the engine in the pits, and it blew up. So apparently what was a mistake by Eisenman takes him out, and that's going to put Mika Turvo in the third position. Turvo, a one-off entry, had no sponsors before the race. Here he is, running in third in front of his home crowd, the 34-year-old rookie, having a great run so far. Christian Kalela in car number 60, uh, 97 excuse me, would have been running in sixth, and Yamino Tenchi in seventh, but it was this incident that took Tenchi out and sent Kalela way back down the running order. So a mistake by Kalela is going to take Tenchi out of the race. A very unfortunate since Yamino Tenchi was impressing in her first run here. It's a shame we didn't get uh, much time to talk about her. But Christian Kalela's run is also going to be damaged a little bit. Kalela running the new Eicholtz car, the only one in the field. Christian Kalela, of course, has run this race many times before. Adrian Devereaux, Woody Watts, and Ross Peterson are going to be battling for fourth. Watts in fourth, Devereaux fifth, and Ross Peterson, and the only Fortner in the field, in sixth place. Ross Peterson said that the, uh, that the underdeveloped Fortner could use a little bit of work. And Adrian Devereaux has been known to be running people off the track in his previous runs here at Coriala. In the ROL and in last year's Coriala Grand Prix, he made quite a few enemies, especially in the first corners of the first lap. To Ross Peterson's European Fortner team, this is a last-minute operation using Thomas Duke's backup car. He got himself into the race. Ross Peterson, of course, former full-time Master Cup driver, is currently running Le Mans cars. In fact, he finished fourth in that race, driving in the Corsa America car. Of course, he drives a Corsa in, that, uh, in those cars. And Peterson having a great showing so far in the race. Leon Keniston, Jack Bouvier, and Marcus Leon are all battling for seventh. Uh, that is the lap car of uh, Vladimir Nikolaev, but uh, Leon Keniston's just up the road. Marcus Leonard is in eighth, and Jack Bouvier in ninth. Bouvier ran very strongly in this race last year, but was one of the first cars to crash out after a rather unfortunate incident early in the race. Bouvier is redeeming himself this season, showing that his TM Lights title was not just a fluke. He has some serious speed in reserve. Bouvier has not had the results that his runs have, sh uh, have deserved, and it looks like he might finally get a break today. On lap 30, Taub is going to be leading the race. He hasn't come by yet. Waiting for him. There is Taub in car 38. He is leading the race still. Leonid Roderick in car number 4 in second. Then it is Turbo in third. Woody Watts in fourth, Devereaux fifth, then it is Ross Peterson in sixth. Chris Johans running in seventh. His pit gamble has paid off in eighth position. It's going to be Leon Kennison. Fantastic effort for the New England short track expert. Then it is going to be in ninth place. Waiting for Matt Taylor, Jacques Bouvier, Marcus Leonard, Scott Bates. Tom Delgado is running in uh, 13th, waiting for him to show up. There he is, Arto is 14th, and Steffi McGlynn in 15th. Brian Sendak, three laps down after repairs needed to, that needed to be made to car number eight after got, he got ran off the road by Alexis Rainsford. And of course, a very controversial penalty, one that seems a bit outlandish, but is certainly still on the rule books. Of course, these two have had clashes all weekend long. I don't think we've seen the last of it. Here we are, running with Taub as he comes to lap Christian Kalela in car 97. Kalela in the, uh, Kalela of course former uh, Formula A world champion also ran this race regularly from 1991 when he retired from Formula A competition uh, up until 1998. The 54 year old making his first start in a long time obviously. <coughs> and uh, he's been a little bit of an obstacle when he's being lapped as you saw right there but other than that he has been running very strongly in practice and qualified in a car that was unproven. On lap 39, Matthias Taub, leading the race, dives into the pit lane for what he believes will be his final stop of the race. Scott Bates in the 88 has already stopped. Here comes Leonid Roderick in the 4 in 2nd. 
Adrian Devereaux in the 26 is going to follow suit and follow him into the pits. You notice Chris Johans in the 24 stays out in one extra lap. That might be crucial. Leonard Roderick in the 4 is going to make an odd mistake and he's going to lose the pit lane battle to Mika Turvo in the 77. There goes Turvo's car. So apparently, uh, the 4 team must have gotten hung up on some lug nuts or something like that because Turvo and his crew are, also didn't have a very good stop, but they still were able to get out in front of Roderick. Yuho Cavela stayed out one extra lap, led his first ever lap in Master Cup competition in his first race, and then the engine goes on car triple one. A great job by Yuho Cavela to give the Carl Revolution a, its debut in TM Master Cup Series competition. He performed quite well throughout the day, ran about mid-pack, but all for nothing. Lap 43, guess who? Christian Kalela in the way again. He hasn't run in a Master Cup car for about 12 years, so he did have the rookie stripes placed back on his car. However, Chris Johans is not going to take too kindly to that, and he runs the 97 car into the wall. Kalela keeps his car over, and he's going to go out of the race. There's Marcus Leonard in the 999 car, who's had a stellar run so far. <laughs> Here it is again, and it looks like Kalela is just getting in the way a little too much. He spoiling a battle between Johans and Bouvier. He got in the side of Johans' car, it looked like, but Chris Johans did not stop to check for damage. Chris Johans very uh, confident in his machine. Currently leading the race, it is. Hell, there's Sendak and Rainsford close together. There's Taub way in the background. And there you see coming into the picture, way in the back, that is Turvo, and then Roderick in the white and orange car. And then behind Roderick is Adrian Devereaux in car 26, and then Ross Peterson in the, in the royal blue car at the top of the picture coming down, and then Woody Watts in the green and gold car, and then Leon Kennison in the white car just under the top of the frame, then that Jack Bouvier in the black car, waiting for Marcus, oh, that's Ethan Everett, that's Ethan Everett in the 11 car, Everett's had a fairly disastrous race, there's Bouvier entering the frame. Just took uh, the front of Everett's car for Bouvier. They do have kind of blue at the front. And then there's Marcus Leonard in the white car and Scott Bates's ruby red car, the Oklahoma Boomers car in the uh, 88 car running coming on by. And here is Matt Taylor in 12th, McGlynn in 13th, and Arto Kakinen running 14th. Uh, last time by, Tom Delgado was scored in 11th, but he slipped and turned and lost all those spots. Delgado having a strong run. There goes Arto! Whoa! Arto going back to his rallying roots. Taking the car off the course a little bit. That gave, uh, pretty sure that gave, gave old Tom Delgado a little bit of a scare, and Arto's gonna lose his spot. Arto Kekkonen battling back in the best way he knows how. He's, uh, kept his race face on, and Arto Kekkonen having a very stellar run despite damage early on from a rather odd mechanical problem. This is the battle for third on lap 55 of 57 between Leonid Roderick and Adrian Devereaux in car 26. Roderick has been doing a very good job to hold off Devereaux, and he's been playing a defensive game because he apparently knows that Turvo and Taub are out of reach. And the best he can do is hold on. However, he's got Adrian Devereaux, one of the new young lions in this series. Devereaux won earlier this year in Australia in a very dominant showing. Devereaux makes a move coming down the inside of Roderick as they come into turn one. Ross Peterson is right there just in case anything goes wrong. In the Fortner. Into turn one. Devereaux's Colton Morrell on the inside. Devereaux looks like he's going to take the spot. Adrian Devereaux sweeps into third, but Roderick is fighting back. Roderick is not giving up yet, but he's going to have to because there's Ross Peterson in the European Fortner team car. Peterson giving Roderick everything he's got to take fourth place away in an underdeveloped car. Ross Peterson has a go, but it's not going to be enough. He slides a little, and Roderick hangs on to fourth place. A great battle for position there by two wily veteran drivers. Here he comes again on the next lap. Peterson has another go into turn one, but this time he's got him. Roderick is going to have to give it up. They, they've rubbed fenders a little bit. And Roderick slides wide, and Peterson moves up into fourth. Great battle for position there, as Ross Peterson takes fourth. Should also like to point out, Mika Turvo is still in second place. This is a one-off operation, as I said earlier, with 11th hour sponsorship. A, a driver who didn't think he'd ever qualify for this race, 
He last attempted this race back in 2003 and has never started it before. Mika Turvo, second Cariella attempt, and here he is up front. Not far behind Matthias Taub, trying to win the Cariella Grand Prix, and might also drive his way into a cup ride eventually if he ever shows up again. <laughs> If he doesn't, it'll be a shame because he's put on an absolutely fantastic performance all day in the MAO1 car, which is not underdeveloped, I might add. Matthias Taub, though, in car number 38, the STS Arrow, sat on the pole here last year and goes on to take home the 2010 running of the Cariola Grand Prix in a fantastic showing by Taub. Pretty sure he's happy about this one. <laughs> he sat on the pole here last year driving in a car funded by himself and a couple of his friends, and now here he is winning the race. And Alexis Rainsford in car number 27 has got to be utterly disappointed about this one. She, In fact, if that penalty had not been assessed, she would have won this race by about six seconds. However, with the penalty assessed, she's going to finish... 22nd place. Big difference there. So Taub wins the Cariola Grand Prix and we hear the National Anthem of Sweden. Well, the de facto National Anthem of Sweden since there is no official National Anthem of Sweden playing on the podium for the first time. Mika Turvo and Adrian Devereaux make this the first time since 1979 that an American has been absent from the winner's podium. Ross Peterson in fourth in the Fortner, the best finishing position for that car, and quite possibly Peterson's only start of the season. Leonard Roderick, fifth. Woody Watts, a great run in the Katziv, and Leon Keniston, a guy who didn't think he'd do so well on all of these European road courses, certainly proves himself wrong. Jacques Bouvier, in eighth, redeems himself from last season. Marcus Leonard, whose aggressive driving style always seems to pay off here. And Scott Bates, a wily drive from the back of the field for the Oklahoma veteran. Fantastic run for Scott Bates. That's going to really help out his team, as the same for Woody Watts, even though I think this run might have Woody Watts' name high on the people's uh, uh, list for the silly season coming up. And now let's check how the point situation sits. After seven races, with the double points race, Durbin still holds onto the lead despite a very poor showing and a late mechanical failure. Adrian Devereaux sits second, at jumping almost 100 points on Durbin, Drew Eisenman in third after he also went out fairly early. Alexis Rainsford sits in fourth, 44 points behind Tony Durbin. Marcus Leonard jumps up to fifth. His power steering incorporated teammate Zelda Ashby was fifth coming into this race. Arto Kekkonen stays stationary in sixth. Alan Hodges moves down to seventh. Scott Bates up to eighth. Leonard Roderick, first time in the top ten in the points this whole season. And Chris Johans hangs on to the 10th spot in points for the Camelot Racing Team. And now let's have a look at 11 through 20. Woody Watts in the second, in the, uh, well, lead cats in the only cats in the top 20. Scott Stoiler in 12th, who won in Australia last year. Matt Taylor, the 2004 champion, sits 13th. Zelda Ashby won at Estoril a few years ago. Then Jacques Bouvier in car number 59 comes back up into the top 20. Uh, double points certainly have helped him out. Ethan Everett, who was hurt by double points and a very poor showing, drops down to 16th. Leon Keniston, doing very well for the STS team. In 17th, Tom Delgado assumes leadership in the Nemoto team. He finished 11th in the race. A very good run for Tom Delgado. And Dale Roswell, the 63-year-old driver, still showing up all these young whelps. And Yamino Tenchi, the young Japanese driver sits 20th in the standings. And now let's have a look at the Independence Trophy points. Cyrus Laterza still holds on to the top spot despite failing to qualify. Laterza says he doesn't think he'll be able to hold on to that points lead for the Independence Trophy. We will have to see. Nils Talonen with one start and double points have certainly helped him and skewed this result. Talonen second. Colin Evans in car number 30 is third. Charlie Waters' is teammate, two points back. Ali Riggs ties Craig Yonser. Esco Cascella in the three has jumped up a few spots, has jumped into seventh, rather. Todd Rodarsik is eighth. Thomas Duke in ninth. Palmer Styles in tenth. Michael Sykes drops out of the top ten, but we will see more of the young Welshman 
and hopefully we'll be able to see more of Lake Orwell and Justin Brooks as well because they are also still in the running for the Independence Trophy for 2010.